Hello, hello friends. This is Becky with Becky Budgets. Just coming on here to go ahead and finally face the music. I have got to um, share with all of you what my husband and I decided we were gonna do with our medical bills. As I've shared before, we had been using our Discover card, um, which had a 0% and that runs out in um, April. So we had to kind of start deciding what we were gonna do. And we finally made a decision. I'm gonna go through what our options were that I mentioned a couple weeks ago and uh, why we decided what we did decide. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and put um, Repro Med. medical bills and I'm just using the note section in the back of my Erin Condren eight and a half by 11 so that everything's in one place um, that way I can look back at this anytime I need to I do not like looking at this number but when I checked the account we are currently at uh, six thousand eight hundred $12.36. Now, to kind of break down what this total consists of, I'm going to go ahead and let's do this. So, $4,100 of that came from the genetic testing that we paid for our failed IVF. When I take that away, That means that $2,712.36. Linus, come here, baby. Let's sit with Mama. I'll just pick up Leo because he likes to sit on Mama's lap. Sorry about that, friends. So $2,712.36 came from our medication and co pays for our. Um, one cycle of IVF and then our three cycles of IUI. So dividing this by four, that means that on average, we paid $678.09 per cycle of <clears throat> IVF and I IUI. Now, our two options were to go ahead and try to get a loan for this amount, but the interest rates are actually pretty high right now, and all of the loans that we looked into were at a rate of 10 to 15%. I did go ahead and check um, the offers on all of our credit cards, and the only one that had any offer that would actually be beneficial to us is a Citibank card that we had paid off about two years ago. And as you know, I don't close those accounts since we're trying to buy a home within the next couple years. And they had a deal for us, I guess, to start using the card again that they would... Um, do a 21 month interest free transfer for a 3% transfer fee. And my husband and I went ahead and decided to go ahead with that. So looking at this, we've got that total of $6,836. Times 1.03, which will give us what our total will be after we um, do the balance transfer. Times 1.03. That's going to give us a total of $7,016.73. If we were to 
divide that by the 21 months that they give us, we would need to pay $334.13 a month to pay that off within 21 months. Now, we are hoping that it does not take us that long. And so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of break down how we think we're gonna go ahead and make this payment. So we're gonna basically, um, we're gonna pay off the my Barclay. And then we did decide to pay off my husband's Barclay with our, our tax return. Uh, one thing that I'm not sure why I did this, but my husband's phone, the Apple phone, I've always looked at as a um, recurring debt because we've been paying it monthly for the last six years because he always got a new phone. But now that he didn't get the new phone because we're on this journey, um, this is actually the last month that we have to pay the Apple. So I should have been looking at it as a debt, but for some reason that didn't click in my mind. Uh, but that means that that money from the Apple phone will also be going towards this, plus the minimum that we've been paying towards the Dell. Now, when I add these four values together, the Barclay, my Barclay had been getting $90 a month. My husband's had been getting 80. The Apple phone gets 5615. And the minimum of the Dell is 129 that I've just been um, kind of lumping together with our minimum payments. When I add these values together, That gives us a total of 355.15. And that tells me that we are gonna be able to kind of make a higher payment than we need for 21 months. So we're gonna be paying about $21 over. The plan is to go ahead and pay the 355.15 through um, October. So we're looking at March, April, May, June, July, August, September, Oct September is the last payment. So seven months. So if we do 355.15 times seven, by October 23, we should have already paid 2400 $86.05. Now this is looking at con concrete numbers. Uh, obviously our snow, uh, we've decided because this is a 0% that this is gonna be the next snowball that we tackle. So when we take that away from our principal, So we're gonna pay off 2,486, and our total is gonna be about $4,530.68. <clears throat> now, in October, our bar, um, not our Barclay, I've got Barclay on the mind. In October, our upstart loan, the more expensive one, is set to already have been paid off. So what the plan is to go ahead and add the 94076 to this total. So 35515 plus the 94076 and that starts in October, which means that our minimum payment for that month without looking at any any snowball would be $1,295.
so we're looking right here we're looking at seven months and then to pay off the four thousand five hundred and thirty with sixty eight cents with the higher total we're looking I don't know what I did we're looking at paying that off in about it's three and a half months but we'll go ahead and put four months so hopefully our goal is to get these medical bills paid off in 11 months and then the city card will go back in its vault and not get used anymore now in our future it looks like if this IUI does not work that we're gonna be doing another IVF. Keeping this total in mind, we're gonna need about $678.09 to go ahead and pay for that. Because this 4,100 wasn't used last time, it's still kind of in the bank. They haven't returned the money and we might just have them keep it to go ahead and process if we get to that point next time. In order to get this paid off or get this taken care of, the plan is to up what we put into our medical every month or every week. So starting the first week of March, we're gonna try to up our uh, sinking funds by $25 and to put $50 into medical every week. The hope with that is that we'll be able to uh, pay any copays that go on during the month. Um, right now, I'll be honest, um, I make all my appointments for the beginning of the year. So it's kind of bill heavy at the beginning of the year. Um, but I'm hopeful that by end of March, Anything that we don't use in that medical bill will automatically get depleted and put onto this, uh, onto the card. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and averaging about two hundred dollars a month or two fifty on those magic months um, will keep us from getting into further debt. Now, one thing I do want to make clear is that. Although this is, or these are the numbers that make up my nightmares, <laughs> which is why I've been avoiding them. Um, this is now going to be added on to our, <clears throat> onto our bills. So starting in March, um, our uh, debt is going to go up seven thousand and sixteen dollars. Uh, that is something that I had been dreading, but life is life. I can honestly tell you all that I do not regret our decisions to spend this money. Uh, both my husband and I have made it very clear to each other that we don't want to have regrets in the future if for some reason we cannot become parents. We want to be able to look each other in the eye and say that we have done everything possible. So there are no regrets with this, but it is going to add more onto this journey. And one thing I have learned is that this debt-free journey is not linear and it will have uh, peaks and dips all the time and this is just our first major dip so um, yep if you're in a similar situation please know that you're not alone and we ripped off the band-aid so now we just got to put our um, life back into gear and keep paying off debt <laughs> I will see you all tomorrow with our spending update and I hope that each and every one of you has a great rest of your week. Take care my friends. <laughs> Bye.